California investors, are you looking to get cash flow, but you are finding it's near impossible to do? I hope so, because that's what I have a solution for. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. This is Holden Wise TV. I'm James Wise. I help people like you. People like you get cash flow. I help people like you get cash flow in a responsible way, though, right? There's a lot of people that talk to people who live in California about investing out of state. It happens all the time, right? California, you know, there's a lot of you, right? There's a whole bunch of people in California, right? So not only that, a lot of you have money. There's a lot of money going in and out of California. And a lot of you want to spend that money outside of California on rental properties because you guys can't cash flow out there, right? Pricing's insane. The government's insane. It's all insane out there in California. So you get a lot of people in the cheaper markets. They want you guys to invest in their market. They want to talk to you about cash flow. But they don't do it like I do it. They don't really cut it to you straight, right? They just try to sell you properties that they own. They try to package it all up, make it look nice, make it look amazing, make it look like it's a can't friggin' lose, right? That's not true, though. There's no such thing as a can't lose, right? I'm in the Cleveland market. Cleveland is so cheap compared to California, right? If you look at a property with your out-of-state eyes, your California eyes, you might be like, no, oh, the property, we only need to put down 30 grand and we got friggin' 1700 a month coming down in rent. That is insane. We can't lose. We're going to talk about the numbers on a property just like that today. But you can lose, guys. You can. Even though it's cheap and the stakes are low, you still have to buy right. And that's what we do at Holton Wise. We teach people how to buy right. We break down the good, the bad. We give you the risks, right? That's why I hope you're going to stick around and keep learning from us, right? Much like the man of the hour, Spiff. Spiff's an investor from California. He's got two million bucks. He can afford to buy a property in California. He's got $2 million goddamn dollars, okay? But he wants a return. He wants a return. He wants low-income real estate that's going to actually kick off a return. And I've been working with Spiff for quite a while to find him properties to utilize that $2 million. If after you guys watch this, you want me to do the same for you, hit my team up, sales at holdenwise.com. Give us your number. We'll call you. We'll talk to you. And we'll go through your wants, your needs, your goals. See what properties make sense for you, right? These are customized videos for you. If you guys are watching this, just so you know, I sent this to Spiff probably six months ago privately. I only released these publicly on Holton Wise TV uh, for you guys to learn later. So anybody who's watching this who ain't Spiff, I'm sorry, but this property, it's long gone. So don't. Don't call and try to buy it, right? You can't. But you can call and talk to us about how we can do the same work for you. So without further ado, Spiff, uh, let's jump into a quick commercial break. Let me get some water, and then we'll talk about the property. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's take a look at the numbers, okay? This property 4010 Bush, Cleveland, 4 for 109. Just hit the market today. We're probably going to be in a bidding war. We're probably going to need to move quick, right? There is going to be a lot of people looking to take this sucker down. List price, $114,900. I want you to pay that. As a matter of fact, I want you to go $100 over, right? Let's just shoot them an offer of $115K. It's like $0.99 cents versus a dollar, right? Something's $1.99. It feels a lot cheaper than if you're asked to pay $2 for it. So when we present our offer to the seller, right? 115, they're like, whoa, we're only asking 114, right? Makes them feel good. Gives us a better shot at taking it down because this, whoo, this is a freaking earner, dude. You got to do what you got to do to take this one down. You might even want to go above that price, maybe as high as 120, but I think 115 should take it down, okay? Now, uh, it's very nice property, and it's been renovated recently, right? It's got the exact 
type of um, like look I would want it to have, right? You got the agreeable gray walls, you got the white trim, right? You got the neutral, uh, the neutral vinyl allure type flooring in the kitchen, right? That's great. Nothing super fancy, but this is what we want for these type of rentals, man. The hardwoods throughout dude this is this is looking good right so at your next turnover it's not like you have to completely overhaul it right we got new updated fixtures right here in that uh <clears throat> bathroom right uh, i don't really like seeing carpet in the bedroom but hey it's already there it's not the end of the world oh plus two it comes with like a gigantic ass bong right i'm pretty sure that's a huge bong or or it could either be a bong or it could be something that you put quarters in hard to tell from this photo Either way, the sucker still makes money, right? So let's keep it moving, people. Oh, wait. Well, check that out, dude. Look at that. That's a purple fan. That's actually kind of cool. I've never seen that before. I like that. My daughter would dig that. Anyway, uh, the rest uh, of the property, right? It's looking fresh. Uh, this is uh, photographs of the other unit prior to them placing a tenant, okay? It's, this is just what you want, right? Nothing fancy, nothing knocking your friggin' socks off, but this is exactly what you want, dude. Updated electrical, like, it's already vinyl-sided. That's really good. You don't have to worry about lead-based paint issues on the outside of your property, right? And the best part about this, okay, the units. They're three-bed, one-bath, okay? Both tenants are paying six hundo, right? Six hundo is under market rent for a two one. Normally on two ones, we are getting seven fifty. But these are three ones, and the units look very nice. So it's not like uh, you need to do an insane overhaul to get market rent. Market rent, like a market rent on this sucker, huge, huge, seventeen hundred a month. That's twenty thousand four hundred a year, right? Of that 20400 a year, I believe your NOI should be a little bit over 10, 10437 If we get it at the 115 that I talked about, right, you put down less than 30 Gs, okay, 28750 bank kicks in 86 2 and a quarter. That would be a 21% cash on cash return or a 9.1 cap, right? And that also includes additional money you're getting now, right, while your tenants are in there. You're not spending money on vacancy, but I'm having you not count a certain amount of money. I'm having you not count over a thousand dollars a year of money that comes in now towards your vacancy, because eventually you'll have a vacancy. I'm having you not count over a thousand dollars a year towards your capital expenditures, right? Those electric panels, they look brand new, okay? But don't forget, right? We got a 30-year roof on these properties, right? Every 30 years, you're dropping seven Gs. I don't believe we have a brand new roof on the sucker, so I'm sure in the next decade you're dropping that money. Your furnaces, they last 30 years. They cost about three grand. Right, so you got to save money towards that stuff. Hot water tanks, there's two of them in a duplex, folks. That's a thousand dollars every 15 years, right? So you're probably getting more money over the first few years of owning this property than I'm even calculating on your return because I know those big charges are coming. That's just part of the game when you own properties, right? But this thing. That's why there's going to be a friggin' bidding war. This thing is nice. It's got the three beds. You could max the rent out at eight fifty a unit. That's friggin' amazing. Now, does it make sense to immediately jack your tenants' rents from six to eight fifty? No, that would be crazy, right? Even though the units are in good shape, you don't want to like force a turnover, especially when you're still bringing in twelve hundred in rent, right? What I'd probably recommend you do: sign them up to a one-year lease once you take it over, keep the rent where it is. Then after that, start going up fifty, seventy-five, even a hundred bucks. Uh, a month, right? They know they can't get no three-bedroom units in these neighborhoods anywhere else. So I don't think they're going to want to leave, but you don't want to shock them immediately with a huge $250 increase. Last but not least, before I get out of here, uh, I want to show you something as far as the neighborhood goes. This, I really like this particular neighborhood. Now, it's not a high-end neighborhood by any means, right? We talk about the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods, okay? Google that if you don't know what I'm talking about. It's probably also in the show notes below, and I know it's on the tools and resource section of HoltonWeiss.com, right? I grade all the neighborhoods in the Cleveland area, A to F scale. A is the least risky. F is the most risky. A, neighborhoods, you're not going to find rentals, right? I know you guys come to the Cleveland market because stuff is cheap, right? There ain't no cheap properties in A-grade neighborhoods, folks. Like, you guys might find the shocking but we also have rich people in the Cleveland area too, right? So there's half a million, $750,000, million dollar houses, right? So that don't make no sense for you guys to even think about, okay? When you're in the rental game though, right? I would consider this to be about a D neighborhood, but it's my favorite 
D neighborhood, right? D neighborhoods, I think it's very important to put Section 8 tenants in there when you can because it eliminates your risk because uh, the biggest risk of a D neighborhood is people not paying rent, right? Section 8 eliminates that risk. And if you're going to invest in a D neighborhood, I love the Clark Fulton neighborhood because this is the house. This right here. I'm sorry, right here. I went too far. This is the house. This right here. This is Metro Health. Big old hospital, big old campus that's getting a billion dollars of investment going towards their campus in the surrounding area of building low-income housing, right? On top of that, if you zoom the map out a little bit, right above here, you got Tremont, Ohio City, Detroit Shoreway, Edgewater, Lake Erie, downtown. Those are all the areas in the Cleveland market where people talk about the resurgence of Cleveland. So you're directly south of all the hot spots that have already gentrified, and you're getting a billion dollars of investment into your low-income neighborhood. So if you're going to make a bet on a low-income neighborhood to get some cash flow but also some appreciation in the future, have your cake and eat it too. Cannot guarantee it, but if I'm going to speculate, I'm going to speculate on the one neighborhood in Cleveland that's bordering a lot of gentrification and is getting a billion dollars of investment. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.